All right, so when, I, when I'm looking at a vector yesterday or Friday, I showed that they went the same direction by finding their slopes. Remember that? But today we're going to discuss um, something called a direction vector. So what, or the direction angle, sorry, of the vector. So let's draw an x-y-axis. Let's draw some vector v. And um, it has magnitude. Uh, that's the magnitude, right? And then I'm going to call the angle that it makes theta. So theta is just um, the angle the vector makes with the x-axis. Okay. Before we move any further, how is this related to Chapter 5 when we started off by using SOHCAHTOA? I'm going to make this dotted. Can I really think of this as a triangle? Yeah, and this is what part of the triangle? The hypotenuse. So if you think of the magnitude as the hypotenuse of the triangle, that sometimes makes it a little bit easier to see what these formulas mean. If I asked you to find this, oh, well, let's do this first. What that this is is going to be how far it is this way. Isn't that it? horizontal component, isn't that that first part there? And how high it is, isn't that its second component? Okay, and so if I ask you to find its components, really what I'm just doing is I'm asking you to find missing pieces of triangle, if you want to think of it that way. If I asked you to find this, I'll call it X. You would say, okay, let's see, that's adjacent, and I have the hypotenuse, trig function. If I asked you to find x and you knew theta and the vector. Cosine. So Katoa, right? When you say, okay, cosine of the angle, I'm just, don't, you don't write this down. I want you to understand where I get this stuff from, that it's not just made up randomly, the cosine shows up. Cosine of theta equals x over this. Agreed? If I wanted to solve for x, couldn't I multiply through then? All right. How do you find something's component form when you have this information? You take the magnitude of the vector and you multiply by the cosine of the angle. To find the vertical one, you're going to use sine. So the magnitude of the vector times sine of the angle. And so I want you to understand then, if you have v and theta, this is how you get its component form. Going backwards then, we're going to have to go backwards as well. If you know the components and you want to find the angle, well, let's talk about that then. If I have V1 and V2 and I wanted to know, hey, what's theta? So let's say I had this and this and I wanted to figure out theta. Tell me some things that you know to do that. There's a couple ways that you can do this. Could I use tangent inverse? Couldn't I do the tan inverse of V2 over V1? Whatever it was. Or, just giving you options guys, or because you had to have it to solve the problem, you could also use cosine inverse of V1 over the magnitude. That also works. Because V1 would be this and that. That would be, the, so I'd have the cosine. Technically, you could also use sine inverse. Here's the thing, though. You guys are going to have to be smarter than your calculators. The sine inverse and tan inverse will only give you one angle, right? And all the way around, isn't there some more angles where they occur? 
so you might have to do some work to find the second one. I'll try to do an example like that. All right, how do you find the magnitude then? So I said if you have the components and you want to find the angle, so this is how you go from component and then you find the angle. How do you find the magnitude? Oh wait, we did that already, didn't we? Don't you just do the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared? Okay, so here's my example. Let's say I told you um, you had vector C with components negative 3, 1. Let's graph that vector a minute. So it look like this. Theta is going to be from beginning position to there. So won't theta be obtuse? Won't it be bigger than 90? Because we're starting here and rotating past 90. Okay. Let's find the magnitude and direction. Okay. So, let's do magnitude first. We're just going to do negative 3 squared plus 1 squared. The magnitude is root 10. Okay, so to find theta, these are my two options. I can either take the tan inverse of 1 over negative 3 if I want, or the cosine inverse of v1 over the magnitude, which I have, I have to have those things anyways in the problem, okay? Um, let me show you what tan inverse, what will happen with tan inverse. So if I do tan inverse of v2 over v1, 1 over negative 3, let's do that, let's see what I got here. Make sure you're in degree mode. I get negative 18 degrees. Is that what you get? Okay. I have a question for you. Does this angle look like it's negative 18 degrees? No. And this is where I said you have to might have to use some thought. But negative 18 would be this way. Here's why it gave you this. Your calculator doesn't know which one's negative, the 1 or the 3. If you graphed vector, the vector um, 3, negative 1, wouldn't it end up down here? So your calculator is, is going to just give you the one between negative 90 and 90. So you have to use some common sense. What could I add to get theta to 18? What would get me here? Yeah, just 180. Okay. So it's 162 degrees. 162 degrees. All right. Hey, just to show you, if I did the cosine inverse one, cosine inverse of negative 3 over root 10, it would be. Do you see how it gives you 162 degrees? Okay. Well, here's the deal. Sometimes when you're doing things, it's easier for people to remember tan inverse because we use tangent probably more often than we do cosine. I don't care. If you want to just always remember tan inverse because it's easier to remember, that's fine. But then you just might have to add or subtract something. 
however with cosine once in a while you're going to have to do because if it was the same deal let's say it gave me 162 and it was the vector down here right it would have still given me 162 and so you just have to have you have to think you might have to add or subtract 180 to your angle because tan inverse and cosine inverse and sine inverse have restricted domains they only give one value of the function and all the way around there's actually two spots where they would be the same how are we doing guys did you do this last year you did it oh you might have let's do one last example then since you didn't i thought you did this last year um, this is really easy, but we should at least talk about it. I just showed you if you had the components, how to find the angle and the magnitude. Let's go the other way. If I told you that I had a vector, I don't know, and this was 115 degrees, let's say. So that's theta. And let's say it had magnitude of 6. And I said, um, find the components. This was the first thing I had to write in your notes. The first component is just the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. And then the second one is the magnitude times the sine of the angle. Okay, it's 115. So we're gonna have six cosine of 115 and 6 sine of 115. It is as simple as that, and then we should plug those in. And we're going to want to make sure we're in degree mode. So um, I get negative 2.5 and 5.4. And then once again, if I graph negative 2.5, 5.4, does that look like that could be that vector? I mean, right, if I went 2 to the left and up 5.4, doesn't it look like it's got there? We just want to make sure we check that it's a logical answer. So this would be its component form.